The memorial behind me marks the former position of the Berlin Wall, which divided the city for 28 years. It was originally built in August 1961 by Soviets to deliberately prevent people from leaving the socialist East Berlin for the capitalist West, with Soviet guards being instructed to shoot those who attempted to cross the wall. But people did still try to cross and many were successful. So why was the wall put up in the first place? Why did people try to cross and how did they do this? We're going to answer all three questions in today's video. We'll start in 1945 and at the end of World War II, the Socialist Soviets immediately made travel from their part of Germany, known as East Germany, very difficult. But travel remained unrestricted in Berlin itself because many people lived in the East and worked in the West or vice versa. However, this eventually presented a problem for the Soviets as capitalist West Berlin and West Germany quickly became a more attractive place to live than the Socialist East. Many people simply moved to Berlin and moved to the West and then either lived in the West or just boarded a flight to West Germany or further afield such as the UK or USA. So to get around this, in the early hours of August 13th, 1961, Soviet soldiers were instructed to place barbed wire and fences at the border of East and West Berlin to prevent people crossing. Perhaps the earliest example of someone crossing was Konrad Schumann in August of 1961. At this point, the wall was very early in its development and consisted of just barbed wire and fences. And being a policeman himself, Schumann was very unhappy with what he was being asked to do, witnessing several families being separated. As a result, he took his opportunity to jump over the barbed wire, with this moment being captured on photo and perhaps becoming one of the most famous photos of the Cold War. It's also been turned into a mural here in Berlin. Next, we skip ahead to 1963 and the single most successful escape attempt on record, when East Berliner Joachim Neumann, who had previously escaped to the West, wanted to reunite with friends and loved ones by digging a tunnel underneath the wall. So Newman, with help from other West Berlin students, was able to complete a tunnel and smuggle 57 people underneath the wall before it was detected by Soviet police and shut down, with the tunnel affectionately becoming known as Tunnel 57 and remembered here with a plaque. Following this, the Soviets deployed microphones at the wall to prevent anyone from tunneling underneath in future. And this was generally a common theme. Any escape attempt, either successful or unsuccessful, was thoroughly investigated by Soviet police and countermeasures were usually put in place to prevent anything like this happening in the future. This meant that as time went on, escape attempts had to become more creative. By 1965, the wall's defences were much more significant when Heinz Holzapfel was called for a meeting at East Berlin's House of Ministries, which coincidentally was very close to the wall. After the meeting, he locked himself, wife and child in a staff toilet and waited for everyone to go home for the evening when they came out and headed for the roof. Assisted by people in the West, Holzup fell through a zip line into the west side of Berlin and using a pulley system allowed him, his wife and child to all escape to the West. There's also a local story that Soviet guards saw this happening but didn't shoot as they thought that Holzup fell was a spy coming from an official government building. But whether this is true or not is very difficult to confirm almost 60 years later. Another example includes two families constructing a homemade hot air balloon and escaping from the East German town of Oberlemnitz, eventually landing in West Germany. It's also worth noting that while these people were able to escape, many others tried and actually lost their lives while trying to do so, including Ida Sickman in August of 1961, who is thought to be the first person to lose their life while trying to cross the Berlin Wall. It's generally estimated that a further three to four hundred people lost their lives trying to cross the wall and a memorial here shows the pictures of all those that lost their lives. If you're new to the channel you can click on screen to see a previous video. It'd also be great if you considered leaving a like and perhaps subscribing and thanks for watching.